Um, tonight's theme, Cat on a Hot Tin Roof. When I was about uh, 28, 29, I was up for the part of Brick in Cat on a Hot Tin Roof at the Globe Theater in San Diego, and I didn't get it. I should have gotten it. They should have cast me because the guy who was cast uh, was was this big, soft guy who just whined and sniveled his way through the whole play. He was he was not a brick, and I was. It was uh, probably my second or third year into my career as an actor, and um, and. Um, I can tell you honestly that never before or since have I ever seen the performance of an, of an actor who got the role that I was up for and didn't absolutely see why he got that role, thought he was fabulous in it. I tell this story often to illustrate that thing about me, that I can let go of it and be happy for <laughs> and even rejoice in another actor getting the part that I had wanted. Uh, that's true, but not that time because the guy just sucked. <laughs> <laughs> the other part of the story is, is why I didn't get cast. Um, I mean, I, I was made for that role. Uh, a wonderful actress named Jennifer Henn, who was the uh, darling of the San Diego stage at the time, was going to be playing uh, Maggie. And we had done a play together the year before. And uh, I just assumed that everybody knew that we would be magic together. So when the night I got the call that I hadn't gotten the part, I got in my car, drove over to the artistic director's house, banged on his door, and demanded to know why. <laughs> and he told me that it was because Jenny Han had blown me off the stage in that play that we had done the season before. And it was the truth. But it wasn't my fault. <laughs> the play was Abelard and Eloise, a story of a 45-year-old middle, uh, a medieval, theological philosopher who, although he wasn't a priest, had taken a vow of celibacy, but still had this torrid love affair and marriage to a 13-year-old girl, one of his students, and had been castrated for it. Now, I could have played Brick, but there was no way at 28 years old I could play a 45-year-old medieval scholastic. <sighs> Jenny was was way too much woman to play Maggie, uh, but I mean to play uh, not Maggie. She's great to play a thirteen year old girl. Uh, but the director let her be very naturalistic and alluring and sweet, and she was a wonderful actress. She did a great job. The director was not so kind to me. He was this uh, coked up gay escapee from ACT in San Francisco, and, and I believe with all my heart that he cast me in the role just to see me get whipped on stage. And I, and I believe that because in the scene where I got whipped on stage uh, and my instinct my choice would have been either pain or stoicism uh, he directed me to do it like you're having an orgasm and uh, the, re the reviews just tore me up and they were and they were true it's the only time in my career that I would sit at home before going to the theater and think I don't want to go to work today no it wasn't it wasn't Ellis Rabb, no, it was Bobby Bonaventura, but I shouldn't say that out loud. <laughs> uh, and maybe he's a better man now for it. Uh, and it stopped me from getting the role of Brick. Um, on the, on, oh, 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 on the night before, on the night before uh, we opened, he came to me and said, you are the hero of this play. Why are you not in the heroic stance? You know the heroic stance? This is the heroic stance. <laughs> he said, I never want to see your heels touch the floor. 
and I do as I'm told as an actor. And in my first, in my first entrance, I'm supposed to run into her father's house with this message for him. When I'm supposed to say, uh, I have come to tell you blah blah blah. And I run in, and he's directed me to see her go into slow motion, physically and vocally, on my toes, crossing the stage, trying to keep my balance, saying, "I have." Come. <laughs> so I didn't get the part, and I didn't, and I didn't get to play. Um, but but uh, so that's the story. That's the story. I've told it a hundred times. But when, but in in relation to the theme tonight, Kanahatan Roof, I started thinking about bricks Br bricks dilemma and uh, and that gay director and the the whole gay atmosphere that was around the Globe Theater at the time and me. Um, a young, very heterosexual man uh, with a wife and child, um, a novice in the theater who felt that he had the license to go over and bang on the door of the of the artistic director of the Globe. And you got to understand that. I had been over to his house quite a few times before that, been invited to dinner without my wife. And I would go every time, even if she was about to put meal on the table. And part of it was because of ambition, but part of it was because I just was fascinated by what was going on over there. Uh, uh, actors and directors from out of town, old friends of his, uh, would stay with him when they were working at the Globe. And walking into that place was like walking into uh, 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 what's his name? We did uh, Importance of Being Earnest. Oscar. Oscar Wilde play. It was like walking into an Oscar Wilde play, bright and and witty and and uh, animated. I remember one time, one time when I was. Uh, I commented on how how much fun it was over there, and and uh, and Ellis Rab, uh, one of the great actors of the American stage, history of the American stage, said answered me. He said, uh, "Darling, why do you think they call it gay?" <laughs> No one ever hit on me or even made me feel uncomfortable. Nothing sexual ever went on or even physical went on when I was around. They were perfect gentlemen all, cultured, uh, urbane, sophisticated. I was a rough stone amongst jewels. And that's probably why they liked having me around. They didn't want me to become one of them. I was a rapt observer. And they were, you know, of the theater. <laughs> Except for that time, I'd have, I'd have, I'd have, I'd, had no real gay friends. I mean, and they weren't my friends, really. The only gay men I'd known up to then was uh, were five incredible, fascinating, inspiring teachers I'd had in junior high school. Two of whom kind of competed for my attention, and uh, I would go home with them. Uh, partly to get away from a very traumatic situation going on in my house and uh, partly because it was just thrilling to do so and I would uh, let them do things to me that felt good. I would spend the night. Uh, the other three teachers knew about this. Two of them were outraged. One of them wanted down on the action. Uh, none of them ever said anything to anybody about it. So, mendacity. Um, not until my second son turned 13, not even when my first son turned 13, but not until my second son turned 13 did it even occur to me that that had been abuse. I mean, I had always thought that I was taking advantage of them. They were getting me off. I was just laying there like a brick, having them uh, 
do things to me thinking that someday a girl would be doing this to me and until then hey <laughs> Twenty years ago, I went and confronted the main one of the two. He said that he'd been waiting for this confronta confrontation and told me that he had truly been in love with me at the time. Well, Abelard loved Eloise, and Eloise stayed in love with him until the day she died. The play, as contemporary it is, as it is, is a, play, is a love story. It's not a story about child abuse. So, <laughs> mendacity? Anyway, I went to see him and he told me uh, about that and I didn't forgive him. And I also didn't thank him for being the person who ignited in me my love of the theater. He was my drama teacher and uh, the one who introduced me to Shakespeare by taking me to the Globe Theater in San Diego every summer. Uh, and it was to do Shakespeare at the Globe Theater in San Diego that I went to begin my career. He wanted it to be clean, what he was doing to me, but it was dirty. In San Diego, it was not only clean, it was immaculate. Theirs is a life and style that I admire, but cannot even aspire to. I will not, cannot, could not ever become a part of that world. I uh, will always be a brick in that world. Mm -hmm.